Mailbag time here on the Cleveland Browns Report. Matthew Peterson answering questions during our live show, which aired on Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern. So our first question comes in from Magic Man. Any chance the Browns sign Christian Wilkins? Any chance? Yes. Likely? No. Christian Wilkins is going to be a heavily sought-after player. I think the Dolphins could explore applying the franchise tag to him. He comes off a dominant season with Miami, nine sacks, 10 tackles for loss. He has truly become one of the best interior defensive linemen in football. And I think Cleveland made their splash interior defensive lineman signing last year with Dalvin Tomlinson. I don't expect them to spend the same amount of money they spent on Dalvin Tomlinson for another interior defensive lineman. They had a lot of success last year by going the more economical route, by holding on to Jordan Elliott, and then also signing Shelby Harris and Maurice Hurst and drafting Siaki Ika. I mean, Ika was a non-factor, but the other two guys, other three guys, they were a part of a very good and deep interior defensive line rotation. I don't think Andrew Barry is going to feel the pressure to go out and sign a big-name guy when he got great production out of cheap one-year contracts for Mo Hurst and Shelby Harris. He may just re-sign one of them to another one-year, three to five million dollar contract. So I would not put your eggs in the Christian Wilkins basket. But let me know: Should the Browns sign Christian Wilkins? If you were calling the shots. Would you invest that much into the interior defensive line? I think we're talking about paying him between fifteen to eighteen million dollars. Like he's gonna get a good payday. And I don't think that's where the Browns want to put their resources back to back off seasons. Ryan Chowdhury, what's going on, dude? Mike Evans, no matter what. I'm on board. Every single day I warm up to Mike Evans coming to the Browns more and more and more. And I started in a spot where I was pretty interested in signing Mike Evans to begin with. Now I'm thinking how special this offense would be with Amari Cooper, David Njoku, when Nick Chubb returns and Deshaun Watson. Like Those three wideouts or targets for him, Cooper, Njoku, and Mike Evans, all similar-ish style of receivers, but also, very importantly, receivers that thrive under the way Deshaun Watson likes to play, which is every once in a while extend plays and be a bit of a magician and then just say, F it, I'm chucking it up and I hope you come down with it. Mike Evans, he's one of the best in the biz at coming down with the football. So I'm all in on signing Mike Evans. Of course, he's going to have a heavy uh, heavy price tag, and maybe the Browns get priced out of that a little bit. But this is definitely a name to keep an eye on. Joshua Miller, Bobby Wagner to the Browns is something I've heard more than once. What do you think? I'm I'm interested in Bobby Wagner. Well, I'm interested in adding a veteran middle linebacker. I like Anthony Walker a lot. And I've said this before, and I'll repeat myself again. This defense is better with than without Anthony Walker. The issue is, three years in Cleveland, all three seasons, had basically season-ending injuries or missed a lot of time. As a result, I don't think the Browns should go into 2024 believing Anthony Walker in his fourth year at the Browns is going to come out and play 16 or 17 games. So they'd be a little bit foolish to continue to make, I wouldn't say the same mistake, but to continue to believe that Anthony Walker, and it's not his own fault, but injuries suck and they have played his career so far in Cleveland. I think they should go a different direction at middle linebacker, like a Bobby Wagner. I really like Levante David from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but if Bobby Wagner wants to come play in Cleveland, I mean, we've had another former Seattle Seahawk linebacker come to the Browns, so why not one more from the Legion of Boom? Cool guy called Zone. I have a video idea. I'm interested. You should give candidates who the Browns might slash will cut and some who deserve slash will get extensions. What do you think about that? We have done cut candidates before. It's been a little while, so I can definitely re-hit that topic as we get closer to free agency. As for extensions, we can look into that. The Browns have already extended a lot of their key players, but next up is JOK. So we'll talk about that um, in another video. I like the idea, cool guy. I also love game time. If you are looking to save some money, on tickets to the next local sporting event you plan on attending, or a concert, or a comedy show. Whatever it is, get started with game time today. What I love most about game time, or one of the things I love most about game time, is the ability to get a view of your seat before you purchase your ticket. That way you don't show up to the stadium or the arena and and be completely blindsided that you're sitting up in the bleachers or that you're in the nosebleeds and you had no idea. No, with game time, you get an awesome bird's eye view of your seat 
before you purchase your tickets. So download the Game Time app. And once you do that, redeem code BROWNSCHAT for $20 off. $20 off your first purchase, which means Game Time is basically spotting you your first run to the concession stand or parking. So use Game Time today. I put all that information in the comments and description of today's video. Shout out to Game Time for supporting the Cleveland Browns report. Tim Green, what's going on, dude? T. Higgins, 26 years old, I think he's saying. 573 yards, five touchdowns. Or Michael Pittman, 27, 990 yards and four touchdowns. Who do you pick in free agency? Both were at 2.2 million. Okay, I'm a little bit confused on the last part in terms of both were at 2.2 million. But I'm picking T. Higgins over Michael Pittman. Now, I will say I think T. Higgins is going to get franchise tag. And maybe he plays on the franchise tag. Maybe they do a tag and trade. But I don't think T. Higgins sees the open market. Michael Pittman, on the other hand, the Indianapolis Colts, historically, have never paid wide receivers big money. I mean, just think about the last 10 years or so. Can you think of Indianapolis and free agency signing a receiver to a four-year, $60 million contract? So if Michael Pittman gets to the open market and he gets a big contract offer from someone else, don't be surprised if Indy goes, we're going to let him walk and we're going to draft his replacement this year because we found him in the second round and we can find someone else in this year's second round. So I think if you're looking for what's more likely to come to Cleveland, I think it would be Michael Pittman. Nicholas with a $10 super chat. No one wanted to listen to me when I was clamoring for Tank Dell. Listen to me now. All right, I'm listening, dude. The Browns can't leave the draft without Javon Baker. Not saying he needs to go with the second, but we need him. I love this dude already. I mean, no one listened to like, like no one was listening to me when I said Tank Dell. All right, Javon Baker, you. All right, Cleveland Brown. Little Beam, next one up. This is not just for me, but all the fans of this channel. If Mike Evans comes to Cleveland, you need to buy his Browns jersey and wear it on the week one watch party. You up for that? I'm in. Say less. If Mike Evans, I will add, I'm going to do it anyway, but if I could just take the mic for a moment for a little bit longer. When I purchase jerseys, I feel like the number that the player wears is a big factor into whether or not I want to get that jersey because then I'm wearing that number. And I've got pretty strong feelings about player number decisions. And I hate the number 13. So if he comes to Cleveland and wears 13, I'll get the jersey, but I'll be like, hmm, I wish it wasn't 13. Because I want, I want to wear the number of a, of a jersey that I would wear if I played in the league. So 13 is my least favorite number. But if Mike Evans comes to Cleveland, Lil B, I'm getting the jersey. Don't worry. Joshua Miller, what does an extension for JOK look like? Great question, Josh. Great question. Josh always asking great questions. I think JOK could get a contract extension of three years. Like a three-year, $35 million. That's a little over $10 million a season. I mean, Grant Delpit just got, what was Grant Delpit's extension? That, that would not show as a great baseline, but we'll kind of see what Andrew Barry was working with. What, three years, $36 million. So I think Delpit is a good-ish measuring stick for what could we see JLK get? Three years, $34 million, right? That's about $11.5 million a season. I think that's a good idea. Three years, $34 million. Chaz Michael Michaels, what do you think about trading for Khalil Mack? I like the idea of trading for Khalil Mack, but that's the key word, the idea, right? I do think Khalil Mack has some good football still in him. He comes off, I mean, this is kind of dumb of me to say, after he had a 17-sack season. Now, he also had six sacks in one game against Aiden O'Connell and the Raiders, but still, Khalil Mack had a huge bounce-back year after Two seasons in Chicago at the end where he was missing some time or maybe not completely as productive as he once was to start his career off with the Bears and before that with the Raiders. But if the Chargers are entering a bit of a fire sale mode because they are over the cap and they need to trim some fat, they traded for Khalil Mack for a second rounder. If they want to give Khalil Mack to the Browns for a third and like a fifth or something, tell me you would not be excited about that. Khalil Mack and Miles Garrett on the same defensive line. 
moving on from a day two pick when you only have two day two picks in the first two days of the draft would definitely sting. But I mean, the Browns got Alex Wright in the third round. He wasn't productive at all his rookie year. If you are looking for guys to be productive in 2024, Khalil Mack's going to do a whole lot more than most likely any third round pick would. So third rounder for Khalil Mack, I'm in, dude. Would you trade for Khalil Mack? Let me know. Trade or pass? Get in the comment section. The only hesitation is at some point you got to have a good farm system because you can't rely on building a roster every single year through trades. And you need some of those day two picks to hit. So you have guys on rookie contracts for more than just one year. But the Browns, I feel like, are so all in on 2024, similar to what they were in 2023 when they traded for Darius Smith. They may very well do a very similar trade in 2024. Nicholas, yet again, what's going on, dude? With a draft class as good as this for wide receiver, is dumb to overpay for a free agent. I think you can get a first-round production as late as the fifth round. This wide, this draft class in general, Nicholas, is loaded at quarterback and wide receiver and offensive tackle. Three cornerstone pieces. So it is lacking in some other spots, but you're spot on that this is a very, very good wide receiver class that, I mean, you take this wide receiver class and you dump it in another year, and there are guys who are going to go round two that would have gone round one in previous years. Last year's wide receiver class wasn't that great. Wasn't Quentin Johnson the first one to be selected as a wide receiver? And look how that turned out for the Chargers. So, would it be dumb? I don't know if it'd be dumb, depending on the wide receiver you're overpaying. I don't think Mike Evans would be an overpay, right? But I think maybe Michael Pittman on a four-year, $70 million contract, all right, I could probably live with going with a Troy Franklin in round two out of Oregon for 73 times less than what you're giving Michael Pittman. But again, it's how you value the 2024 impact versus the long term. Are you looking for guys that can come in and help squeeze out a Super Bowl in 2024? Or are you planting seeds for 2025, 2026, and 2027? How do you want to balance the two, right? That's really what it comes down to. And you got to have some level of balance, but I think there is a much bigger weight being placed on the what's best for 2024 compared to what can we do to maximize our 2025 and 2026 efforts. Plus, the Browns get back in the first round of 2025. So they may feel like, while we definitely don't have a lot of great homegrown talent growing at some spots because we haven't had a lot of early draft picks, we're going to get back in the first round in 2025 so we can hopefully make up for that next year. Oren, what's going on, dude? Do you think we could get a wide receiver like Mike Williams in free agency? Oren, Mike Williams is under contract, but I could see the Chargers moving on from him. And if they move on from him, I could see the Browns having some interest in Mike Williams. They were, if I remember correctly, interested in Mike Williams before he got extended by the Chargers, or at least I was interested in Mike Williams. However, he does come off an ACL tear, and he has missed some time throughout his career due to injuries, so the medicals will have to check out, but I could see the Browns having interest in a receiver like Mike Williams because he is that big body, go up and climb a tree type of wideout that thrives with a quarterback like Deshaun Watson. All right, let's wrap up the show by talking about card time. Trace, what are you thinking? I'm going to get weird. Ace of spades. Ace of spades, okay. How about ten of hearts? I like it. It's close. Nine of clubs. Ooh. Nine of clubs. All right, that will do it for us on our mailbag today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you all later.